Hello and welcome to the SWS Classroom Chat. Today, we are going to be discussing chemistry, especially ICSC Class 10 on how students should approach the board examination as far as the chemistry paper is concerned. Joining me now is Ms. Deali Sen Gupta, chemistry teacher with over 25 years of experience, has been a board examiner, so she understands exactly what students should do and should not do. Thank you very much, Ms. Sen Gupta, for your time. Uh, my first question, semester one was entirely MCQ. Semester two is going to be a combination of MCQ and subjective. In terms of the study approach and more importantly, the revision approach, what are the aspects that students should keep in mind while they are kind of covering the last few days before the examination? Yeah, actually, um, uh, good morning. It's a pleasure to be uh, on your show. And... Um, as regards semester two, the portion that uh, has been included is more theoretical than mm. uh, conceptual. Mm. So I feel the children require more of practice, that is uh, reading the chapters thoroughly mm. and uh, practice by writing, mm. especially the equations mm. and the organic portion. We have um, the structures and the, you know, the names, IUPAC names, etc. Yes. The best way the children could uh, you know prepare is by after reading it thoroughly, hmm. writing and practicing. Okay. Because uh, these are studying chapters, so thoroughly the portion has to be studied. Right. In fact, that was going to be my second question because the entire semester two syllabus is based on equations. So you're saying the mantra to learn them well and learn them thoroughly is to write them down uh, so that it kind of stays in your mind. Yeah, better. yeah, yeah. As soon as they have learned it, they hmm. just write it down and hmm. that will really help in, you know, sort of retaining. Hmm. Uh, so because it, these have to be learned yeah. and uh, they have to strictly follow the syllabus. ICAC gives a beautiful, you know, detailed uh, syllabus in which everything that the children need to prepare is given. Hmm. So they should refer to that syllabus and study exactly uh, what is required for the board examination. Right. And I think um, that should be enough. But the study should be very thorough. They okay. cannot miss any portion. Absolutely. One of the common problems, ma'am, that many students tell me, um, and I have seen many of my classmates back uh, in school in those years also face the same problem of going blank during a chemistry examination because of the intricacies of the formula, the equations, etc. How does a student really deal with the situation of that kind in the examination hall? Yeah, actually, this is a very common question that I have been asked by my students also. Mm. So my advice is that the more you practice, the more you do questions, especially mm. if you solve the last 10 years ICC questions, some sample questions. Mm. So you will be more confident. I think mm. the child will be more confident to face the examination. Mm. And uh, if a thorough practice is, you know, behind his preparation, I'm sure mm. this blanking out thing will not happen. Hmm. Uh, they, and most of the questions in ICSC are, you know, they follow a similar pattern. Hmm. So they are thoroughly prepared. Hmm. Then uh, the question of blanking out should not arise. Okay. And of course, definitely um, reading the question thoroughly, hmm. what is required. Hmm. And science paper means you have to be very precise hmm. and answer exactly what is needed. Right. You don't need very long answers, but just hmm. to the point and exact answers. In fact, uh, that's what I wanted to know. When they have to write an answer, is there, a, uh, is there an art of writing the perfect answer in a subjective format and the things that they should definitely include and things they need not include? Definitely. Like suppose uh, in chemistry, uh, the answers are not very long because we just ask, yes. you know, uh, normally it's identify something or yes. name this. These are short questions which are, which are asked. Yeah. Or there are questions like give balanced equations. In mm. that case, the student must give a balanced equation. Mm. The only long questions are the reasoning questions. Yes. So when they're reasoning questions, then they have to uh, you know, write precisely, not very long answers, short answers, mm. where the keywords have to be underlined. Then it makes okay. it easier for the examiner also. Okay. That here the keywords are there. So yeah, the student knows it. Okay, so that's so an important. Of very long answers. Yes. Yeah. It's so, precise and to the point and answer it. I mean, underline the keywords. So that's an important tip. So you are suggesting that the students underline the keywords after they've finished yes, writing the answer. That definitely or, helps. Yeah. Or yes. probably at the end of the yeah. paper, when they're revising the paper, they could. Uh, do yeah, the they could do that. And then it will be a revision for them also that they have included what is exactly needed. Absolutely. Uh, and especially now they have organic chemistry this uh, semester. Yes. So. Uh, the you know the presentation should be neat 
when they write the structures, the bonds should be written very clearly. Right. Because sometimes as examiners, we are confused whether it okay. is uh, placed in the right place or not. And if no case of overwriting should be there, right. ICC doesn't accept overwriting at all. So we okay. normally are asked to mark it incorrect okay. uh, and uh, deduct marks. Nothing in pencil. Okay. Everything should be written in pen okay. and no overwriting at all. So, so when you, you say have made a mistake, yeah, no, yeah. So just to clarify, when you say overwriting, yeah, yeah. you mean that if someone has written uh, by mistake, you know, NH2 and they want to make it NS3, yeah, they should NH2. strike it out completely. It out. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. So Absolutely. the two should not be converted into a three by overwriting, is what you're saying. Not at all. Not at all. Sometimes okay. when we are writing organic structures, you know, hmm. the hydrogen, uh, hmm. the, I mean, the remaining uh, valencies are filled up by hydrogen. Hmm. Sometimes I've seen students. They are somehow, you know, uh, overwriting or just scoring out something and fitting the hydrogen in. Hmm. It shouldn't be like that. Just score out the entire structure and redo it again. That so is, if, even uh, if the over even if the overwritten uh, equation or formula, whatever is is seeming to be correct to the eye of the examiner, if it is a case of overwriting, marks will not be given. Yes, definitely. Okay. Okay. It's That's not important. Accent. That's an important point. Now, as far as organic chemistry, which you touched upon, uh, many students again find it very challenging. What yes. should really be the strategy to deal with organic chemistry? First of all, how do you kind of simplify it and not get overawed by organic chemistry in your head? Actually, for class 10, they have given very basic organic chemistry. They have to do a very bare minimum. Yes. Okay? So then, uh, and when we teach in class, we generally... Uh, make it simple for the students mm. and the most important thing here is when they are doing structures as well as writing the names there are very set rules given by IUPAC mm. that the child has to follow to the T mm. where there is a you know where the name has to begin with a small letter where the hyphen should be given mm. what are the rules of you know naming the longest chain first and then making that parent the mm. substituent the identifying substituent mm. so just follow the rules that is given and as I have said before, the best way to overcome all uh, these difficulties is to thoroughly practice by writing. Right. Follow uh, the rules, write the names, the structures, and practice as much as you can practice by writing. I think it just gives confidence to the children. Absolutely. Now, uh, during the pre-board examinations, what were the common mistakes that you found many students were making, which they should obviously look to avoid uh, in the examination? And even otherwise, as a board examiner, uh, what do you find? The, is there a pattern to the kind of mistakes and errors that students commit? Yeah, definitely. We have, you know, we always categorize the very common errors so that we can give a feedback to our children later on. Hmm. The common errors in chemistry that I find is uh, mostly when they are writing equations, hmm. I told you that overwriting part, because hmm. when they are balancing, uh, in a hurry, they are going to balance the equation. And then uh, there is, you know, two is scored out and three is written in place of two. I mean, that should be avoided. Okay. okay? And uh, secondly, they forget to give a balanced equation. If the equation hmm. is not balanced, no marks okay. are given in ICSC. Yes. No marks at all. It's zero. Yes. And then other common mistakes that I have found is observation-related questions. Like this is a very common question that is asked in hmm. class 10 as well as in class 12. Mm -hmm. That what is the observation? What would be rather, rather what would be the observation for this uh, particular reaction or not? So children mostly, they'll write just, they'll state the equation or they will give the conditions. It's not that. Observation means what we are going to see, like what's going to happen. Is there going to be a color change? Hmm. Is there going to be a precipitate formed or some kind of a gas to be given out, which is either colored or has an odor. That is the identification that the board looks for. Okay. So observation related questions, I find children make a lot of mistakes. Hmm. So we do give a feedback to them and, um, and show them um, and how the answers are to be written. Right. And another mistake that I commonly find is sometimes when we give name the following, hmm. like suppose a common uh, example, or of aluminium, hmm. the name means they have to write both sides, not give the formula. Okay. So uh, that that you know that involves reading the question properly. Okay. If it is identified, it's fine. You give the name or the formula; it's correct. But right. if formula is asked, then give the formula. If right. names are asked, then state the name of the chemical okay. compound, the process, whatever it is. Right. And another thing is in inorganic equations, the conditions are important, especially if you're writing manufacture. Like we have common chapters like ammonia, H two S O four. So when you're writing the manufacture of these things. We look for the equation as well as the correct conditions. 
you know, what is the temperature, what's the exact temperature, exact pressure, hmm. what is the catalyst or promoter that you're using. So they have to study the exact conditions only for the uh, manufacturers. We don't need the detailed processes of uh, the furnace, this, that, and all that is not needed. That's so uh, these yeah. are generally what I would observe. Okay, just to take off from what you said. Now, for instance, would you suggest that students, since you said they make a lot, make errors, overwrite, especially when they're balancing equation, do you suggest that they do it on a rough page and then finally write yes, the correct yes, one? Yes, definitely, definitely. That would be a better way. Or of they can it. do it in yes, or they can write it in pencil, huh. uh, solve it in pencil, and then later erase that and write it in pen. They shouldn't leave any answer in pencil also. ICAC, IAC don't accept answers in it's pencil. It's in pencil. Uh, lastly, the gap before the chemistry examination, the two to three days gap that they get just before the chemistry examination, by which time they would have already studied, they would have revised a couple of times, having prepared yeah. for their pre-board examinations. What should, what should they do in the last 48 hours before the examination? Yeah, so what I advise my students is when they study for the first time, they should highlight Hmm. in the textbook or in their notes, whatever they're studying, yeah. studying from, whatever they are studying from, they should highlight the important points of the often asked questions. By now, they know what is asked very often in ICSC. Yes. Yes. know what are the common kind of questions. Hmm. So uh, during those last 48 hours, it is just revision of those highlighted questions. That's okay. it. They okay. shouldn't sit to revise the entire thing thoroughly one after the other. Hmm. Then there's no time. Okay. Just the highlighted portion, the okay. important questions with the hmm. teachers are definitely discussed what are the what are going to be the important question. They should definitely look at the free paper hmm. where the teacher has corrected and given, hmm. you know, uh, given them tips as to what should be exactly written in place of uh, the incorrect answer. So, uh, and also, so just would that you, I think will help them. Yeah. And lastly, would you suggest that they solve uh, a question paper, a pre board paper of another school or any other sample paper? That's available Definitely. a day before yeah. the solving examination. Papers, yeah, yeah. Solving papers is always advantageous. Mm. At least one paper if they solve before the exam also, mm. it's going to be to their advantage mm. and they can get back to the teacher if they have uh, any doubt. Right. And uh, they should try to do it in real time. They should try yes, to time definitely. themselves. Yeah. Yes, yes. Time themselves and then, uh, you know, solve the paper will definitely give them confidence to face the exam. Right. Great. Very useful tips. And I'm sure the students are going to take advantage and listen carefully to whatever you have said and going to implement that during the revision and also during the examination for chemistry in ICSC class 10. Thank you very much. Wishing for them time. all the best for the exam and hoping that they'll do extremely well. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you.